Hello and welcome. Alan uh, Plum here again with a little more from Shed Engineering. Now many of you will know that I've uh, got a new Panasonic camera, uh, HCW570. I used to have the uh, Canon which had got the cassette tapes in uh, but that's gone up the creek. Now when I was filming the Flying Scotsman the other day, as I panned round the last, I don't know, five seconds, ten seconds of the shot, all I've got in the uh, viewfinder or on the screen was a reflection of the sky. Well, obviously, I haven't got time to adjust it when you're panning round like that. And it weren't a particularly bright day. Uh, there have been other occasions where the sun has been a problem. And so... Um, I was wondering what you could actually do about that and just using some thin card a little bit thicker than Christmas card I would say um, went about making this it won't show up very well with it being sprayed black it is just white card sprayed black um, I don't know whether that will show up on camera but the idea was and I can only demonstrate it on my old camera is that that would just give like a sun shield fit over the screen of the camera and obviously as you're looking in here then this uh, shield here could be adjusted and folded down so you could have the screen at any angle but then if I turn the camera on you might you might get a picture in there yeah and so obviously that would uh, shield it from the Sun well that's all got a little bit complicated as you can see um, the screen on the Panasonic is uh, bigger than that in actual fact. And I thought that's a, a little bit over complicated. And I found some uh, what I can only describe as black acetate. Uh, I must have bought it from the railway model shop. But it's, uh, it's quite stiff sticks together with poly cement nicely so I thought well could we sort of simplify that and so here we've just got well like a large matchbox outer cover basically and that again would just fit over the screen and as you can see how that would uh, block out uh, a lot of the sun from either side and if you think about it if you extended that and made it narrower and narrower and narrower you're virtually making a, a viewfinder that you could put one eye to and that would block out all the light well yes in actual fact the black acetate uh, screen shade worked very very well i took it outside into the bright sun uh, and you could see the screen much clearer but I thought uh, it's still far too complicated and it took up a lot of room in uh, my camera bag and after all you might go all summer without the need for a, a screen shade so I thought it's got to be something that uh, will slip in your top pocket almost and so came up with this just a piece of card folded up into uh, uh, a box without ends just a tab that goes uh, over the front and uh, that's enough to hold it in position over the screen now I haven't uh, sprayed it black so that you can see it better you could also uh, put fabric type gaffer tape over the folds if it was something you might get used to and you was going to use more often uh, and as you can see it folds up into next to nothing and I'm pretty sure it's stiff enough to hold its shape uh, and keep out most of the sun 
So uh, that might be something worth experimenting with. The other thing with um, these cameras is the zoom control. Right, this little button here. It's the same on the Panasonic. And I don't know whether it's because I'm dyslexic or I'm slightly dyslexic and, and, and I can get D's and B's mixed up uh, very, very easily. But it doesn't matter how much I've tried to memorise which is zooming in and which is zooming out. I've even had a little uh, arrow on here. But because you're going side to side, left and right, I, I can never get it right. And so I'll be zoomed in on something, uh, a locomotive, sort of 500 yards away, and then want to gradually pull back as it comes towards me. And every single time do I move the button the wrong way. And so I zoom in a little bit more before gradually coming out. Uh, and it's been an absolute, absolute pain. I think I did it on the Flying Scotsman. I was zoomed in at a long distance and then wanted to gradually come out. And I think, again, I touched the button the wrong way and then the right way and started pulling out. And I've always thought, why isn't the button the other way? So that it's more logical. You know, if you're zooming in, you're pushing it forward for, 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 for zooming in and sort of pulling the button back for zooming out. Now, I don't know whether anybody else has trouble with it, but I also wondered whether I could solve that problem. So let me just try and uh, demonstrate. If that's your toggle button uh, for, for your zoom, obviously side to side, then what I uh, actually did, if I can find it, from uh, this black acetate, I just glued two or three pieces together until I've got a, a reasonable thickness and it was a, a lot stiffer. But I wanted one little bit, this end bit here, to be, uh, to be much thinner to fit underneath the toggle switch. They all seem very similar. Um, so that gave me a nice flexible um, little bit to slide underneath. And then I glued three or four pieces on here to uh, make it a lot more stiff and rigid. And what actually happens, if that slides under the toggle switch, because obviously here you've You've, you've got the uh, support going down into the camera. This little V slot actually slips underneath because I didn't want to be drilling holes into the camera buttons or, or, or anything like that. I didn't want to be uh, risk damaging the camera in any way. So um, that slides underneath. Now, if we pivot that just there, and we move this backwards and forwards, right? Then this goes side to side, obviously. But at the same time, you've got to move this a long way for this to move a short distance. So it actually gives you more control. It almost gears it down. So you've got very, very minute uh, control over it. So when that slides underneath, right you, you get that kind of effect and when you move the lever forward it's as if the camera is going forward zooming in which makes a lot more sense to me and if you're pulling out as if the camera is coming away from the subject then you're pulling back on the lever which again makes sense and so to operate it you're less likely to to make a mistake so that's um, basically the, the little device I then needed a pivot point well obviously I can't really drill a hole in the top of the camera um, so I had to devise a, 
a little pivot point. And the way I did that, I made uh, another plastic strip coming across the top with a uh, drawing pin in it. So the, the pivot point was like over the top. Uh, I couldn't really get underneath because I needed the lever to be low down next to the button. So the pivot is almost over the top, right? And then this piece of plastic here is taped down to the camera. Now, obviously, uh, I can only show that in photographs, but I'll try and get a mirror set up and just show you the fine movement and uh, fine, very slow movement I can get using this lever. So, as I say, I don't know whether anybody might be interested in experimenting with that. Here you've got the stiffer section of the lever laminated together. Then a strip of plastic running along the top of the camera body which provides the pivot point which is made by a drawing pin. And then that is held off the camera body at this point here with a thicker piece of plastic underneath so that it's raised up and allows the lever to slip underneath. As I've said, I didn't want to risk damaging the camera, so the plastic strip making up the pivot point is only held in place with double-sided tape underneath and insulating tape over the top. And obviously be careful with any alterations and uh, you do them at your own risk. Now the forked end of the lever that engages with the zoom button, that is purposefully flimsy just one thickness of acetate because what I'm trying to do is make it fail safe. If the lever is moved too far or it's knocked or it catches on something, the engaging V section of the lever should deform and bend without putting undue, undue pressure on the zoom button. Right, you can see the uh, lever just sticking out here. Now I appreciate this idea will not be for everyone. Uh, most people won't have the same uh, problem I do with uh, zooming in and zooming out. And uh, most bad zooms can often be taken out in the edit obviously. Uh, now I'm sorry this footage is not very good. I was actually hoping it would show just how very controllable the zoom becomes uh, as it's sort of geared down. Now again, uh, the same with the screen shade. You may not want uh, the zoom lever in position all the time. Well again, that's not a problem. That's solved by the strip of plastic uh, holding the drawing pin. That strip of plastic is quite springy and uh, you can simply lift up the drawing pin and that piece of plastic and the pin comes out of the lever and the lever comes away leaving the um, zoom toddle button uh, unhindered. So there we go, just a couple of ideas that might be worth thinking about. I hope you th found something uh, of interest and as always many thanks for watching.